Alright, so now let's get going on the best project of the year. The zombie project. Alright guys, so here is the uh, zombie project. So, um, just a little explanation and then an example on how to uh, do the project. So, you live in, and first you have to decide on a city, okay? Now, you can't just pick any city, okay? I do have a list of pre-approved cities, and in class you'll sign up for those. Um, but if there's a city that's not on this list that you would like, come talk to me, um, and we can take a look at it, okay? So you pick a city, okay? In this case, we'll just, for our example, use Lisbon here. Okay, so the date is 2 19 That's coming up pretty soon from when I made this video. Maybe you're watching it after. The news just reported its first infection of the mind-destroying contagious disease dubbed Z disease, or simply zombie. You're working in a government department to try and understand how long until the whole town is infected. Plus, you need to help get the population to leave. Before your assistants were turned into zombies, they were able to give you some data on how fast the zombies are spreading. Okay, so that's in the table below. Now, again, you don't just pick your numbers. I've got some tables here of the infection rates, um, and you'll choose these in class as well, so nobody will have the same one. Okay, um, so if you don't have that information, and I'll post that up, if you don't have that information, you need to come talk to me to get it, okay? So whichever one you have, you'll write that in or whatnot, okay? You will also get a memo from the other group in charge of evacuating the civilian population, okay? So the evacuation is going well here in your city with a starting population of, okay, you need to find the most current population you can of your city um, but we are only able to get out a certain amount of people out of the city every day this is another number you need to come talk to me about um, so that we can make sure it's not too big or too little we need to be faster but are losing military personnel due to the growing number of zombies please send more help as soon as possible okay so you need to get a handle on when the population will be evacuated and how much time you have according to the zombie infection growth Okay, so take the city you were assigned and the data showing the rate of infection and find out how long it would take you to infect the whole city, accounting for the population changing due to evacuations. Okay, now we are going to present this in class. So what you need, okay, here's the things you need for your presentation. City, population, the table for zombie growth, um, okay. You need an explicit equation, the table, and the graph of both of those situations. So the evacuation and the zombie growth. How many days it would take the whole city to be infected. Um, we're also going to kind of go back to uh, those key features that we learned in a previous unit and kind of connect them to our story and how they relate to the context of our story. Okay, where they meet and what that means. Okay. Um, now, you can deliver it in a few different ways. You can make a poster, just a simple portfolio, or some sort of computer program, okay? There's also a written portion, um, and this is more, I should probably call it more an artistic portion, okay? Because you're either going to write a story uh, about what is happening here, um, or I do allow it to, uh, to have some other things, too. Okay, um, you could do a, a story or maybe like a graphic novel, comic, uh, a really cool picture, uh, some other thing, and you'll need to talk to me about that. But here's the rubric of how things are graded and the total points it is. Okay, so let's take a look at that example now. Go in here. Let me just um, do these examples of what we need to do. All right, so I'm going to hold off on this graph and where they intersect. Um, for a bit, okay? And um, let's go to my table. So my table, it started out at 0, 5, then 120. So I want something like this. And this is days. This is zombies. And then it was 2 and 80, and 3 and 320. Okay. Now, do I need to finish this table and use up the whole space? I could if I wanted to, but I don't have to. Okay. Oh, that might not be right. 
that's much better. Okay, so that's up to five days. You can see my zombies are growing pretty quickly. So now for my equation, okay? So we have to decide, is this a linear or exponential? Okay, so 5 to 20, we could add 15. But if I add 15, will that get me to 80? Nope. So it's most likely not linear. So let's do exponential, so timesing. So 5 times 4 would get me to 20. Times 4, is that 80? Yes, it is times 4, yes. So remember, for our equations, we need to know our growth, which mine is times by 4, and where we start. Okay, Which for me was at 5 zombies, right? We look at the 0 days, we go to the 5 zombies, that's where we're going to start. And then I go f of x equals my starting, which was 5. What do I do to 5? I times it by 4. How many times? Repeatedly. So I get f of x equals 5 times 4 to the x. And that's my equation. Okay? That's my equation. So, now there's some information that I can use from that. Okay? So, let's look at where we want to go first here. All right. Thinking about these features of functions, um, we usually want to graph first, but I, I guess what I need to decide, is this graph going to be discrete or continuous? Remember, continuous is if it's a line. Discrete would be more like dots, right? That you don't have the in-between. So let's think about our context, OK? Um, Am I going to have in between pieces here? Okay. Are we going to have a uh, half of a zombie? Okay. We could have, you know, half of a day, and maybe we could have like 16 zombies, which would be in between there, but I can't have half a zombie. So I would most likely call this discrete. Okay. And what would be that contextual idea here is because, you know, um, its number of zombies, and they have to be whole numbers, integers. So that represents, that contextual represents that I won't have like half a zombie, though I, I suppose you could argue, continuous as well, that someone's in the process of changing into a zombie and not fully a zombie. Um, so honestly, it kind of depends on which one you'd like to go with um, as to what you would end up with. Now we can look at the second one, increasing or decreasing. Well, the number of zombies is going up, so it's definitely increasing. Okay, what does that mean? According to our story, okay, the zombie population is rising. Oh my goodness, I need to write better, don't I? Can't spell either. All right. Okay. So now, there's a few ways that I could go to graph this. Okay, because a graph will help me. I could try to do it by hand. I'm going to recommend not doing that. Okay, because we have that awesome tool, that online graphing tool called Desmos.com. Okay. So that's where I would go. And then I, using my equation... I would just type that in to Desmos, exactly how I see it, and then I would graph that. Okay. Now, I'm going to hold off on showing you my graph until I graph the other stuff as well. The reason I'm doing that is because um, it'll, the graph will help me with some of this stuff. I suppose we could do the y-intercept, because from the table I should be able to see that. My y-intercept is 0, 0,5. But, and what does that mean? That means at the start, at 0 days, well, there are 5 zombies. So at the start of the outbreak, the city had 5 zombies. Okay? 
All right. Now, this rate of change, that remember, for exponential, you need an interval, okay, for rate of change. So we could think of it as our growth, okay? How is this growing? Well, we're timesing by 4, okay, which means we're quadrupling, you know, timesing by 4, so we're quadrupling zombies every day. The number of them, okay? So, on linear, that rate of change would be slope. And I still want to show you how we think of this as rate of change as well, um, to kind of see how that works as well. All right, so we've got quite a bit of stuff there to go with. But now let's take a look at our population evacuation. All right, so this one, let's think. Okay, before, before it starts, before we start evacuating people, okay, how many people do I have? Well, my population... What was that? 35,854. Okay, so here's my number of people, my population in the city. This would be days again. Okay, so at zero days, I had this population. Now, what's happening? Okay, it says we're getting 1,200 people out of the city every day. So what is happening to my population? Well, we're losing 1,200 people every day day. Okay, so I want to fill it out probably about to the same place. So I'm going to subtract those. So I go 35,854 minus 1,200. That gives me 34,654 after day one. And then minus 1,200 again to get 33,454. And then 32,254 then 31, 54, and finally 29, 854. Now, obviously, this will keep going, so that's why we make our explicit equation. So now this one's linear because we're subtracting by the same number each time. So I know it's linear, so it's going to be, we'll call this one g of x. g of x equals, what did we start with? My population, 3, 5, 8, 54. We're subtracting 1,200 each day, so that one gets times by x. Okay, so once again, I look at this one. Is it discrete or continuous? Okay, well, can you evacuate half a person? No, but could half a person be evacuating? Yeah, so once again, it kind of depends on how you want to phrase it. If you're going to choose discrete, you need to say something like, you know, I can only evacuate full people. If you're going to go with continuous... You would say, you know, people are continually evacuating. Um, they're just not completely evacuated yet. So um, that's kind of the contextual meaning you'd have to put into either one of those. Now, looking at this, my numbers are going down, so we're decreasing. So what does that mean? You know, why is it decreasing? You know, the population is going down because... People are leaving. They're evacuating. Okay. Now, for linear, um, the rate of change is pretty easy. It's that slope, right? And we could graph it as well, and we could find that rate of change through that, which we'll be able to see when we look at if we do it through the interval, too. So we'll do it both ways, just like we did exponential. So if we do the slope, it's 1,200 over 1, and a negative 1,200, right? So what that means is we lose 1,200 people every day, right? That's the context there, all right? And that rate of change will mean the same thing. We can see how we could do that one through an interval as well. All right, so the other one we could do is a y-intercept, okay? Because that's where we start, right? So our y-intercept is 0, 35,854. So what does that mean? That's our population at the start of people, not of zombies. Okay. So now we can, on Desmos, we can use our equation here, and we can graph that. Okay. That's why I would hold off. 
because that's going to help me see what kind of window I need to make. All right, so a few things about Desmos to help make it easier. When you go to Desmos, you'll click to the calculator and it'll give you here. This obviously is where you put your equations. Notice I put them in exactly how I wrote them. Okay, they gave me the colors there. So I know I can only see red, I can't see my blue. Why not? Because my y-intercept is so high. That's just a 10. So over here, you can click on this. You can click on projector mode, which makes the graphs thicker. And then you can adjust your x and your y axes to help you see the whole picture. Okay, something else you can do, if you click up here on that settings, and you click over here, you can change from discrete to continuous and you can change the colors as well. You can also put them into tables and some other things like that. Okay, So there's multiple ways that you could end up um, doing this. Okay, um, But... Alright, um, there's been a few of you that I think um, um, have, have been watching the zombie video and haven't quite got um, this example, so I'm inserting um, this in here. Um, to kind of take you through a little bit easier how to use Desmos to create the graph. So, I've already got my two functions, which I talked about in the video. So, f of x equals, let's see, it was for the zombie growth rate, four, 5 times 4 to the x power. Okay, so there's my first one. And then I'm going to go g of x equals for my population of Beja, three, uh, 35,854 minus 1,200x, right, that's my evacuation, okay? Now, when I do this, even if I get rid of that, I still can't see anything, right? So I used that arrow up there, right, um, to close it, okay, if I don't want to see that. But if I move this around, okay, it looks like I've got zoom in a little bit, right? It, that makes no sense, right? So here's kind of what I can do. So as soon as I find the x value here, okay? So it's almost at 30, okay? So that's going to that's gonna be something important um, to help me, okay? Um, and then also my population is kind of the other number that will be helpful. And I'm trying to uh, zoom in on it, but... It's hard, proving harder than it is, okay? So, on the upper right, that little wrench, that's what I'm going to press. I like to put it in projector mode just because it makes it a little easier to see, okay? That was weird. Let's try that again. There we go. Now, that minor grid lines, I'm going to uncheck because I don't want minor grid lines, okay? Now, my X and Y axis, so X axis, I could add a label here and type in days, right? And my Y would be population, whether it's a population of zombies or people in the city, okay? Now, I want to change these numbers right here, okay? This is how the best way to do it. So I don't really have negatives, so let's just do negative ones for the minimums, okay? Then the maximum for my x-axis, we saw that at 30 is when my population hit the x-axis, okay? So what I want to do for that one, um, let's put 35 few days past that, okay? And if I wanted to, this steps means I could count by ones, I could count by twos, I could count by, you know, whichever one I wanted to do. Maybe I'll just put counting by fives, okay? Now for the y-axis, the bigger number, I want to put above my population. So my population is 35,000, so I'm going to do 40,000. So if you have a population of like 6.5 million, okay, um, you want to put a little bit above that so you can see it. And already as I'm typing this in, you can kind of see. And maybe I would, you know, cut that in by 10 and put my step of 4,000. Okay, you don't really need to change the steps as much. Okay, so then I close that and, and I can zoom out just a little bit further if I want to or zoom in um, or kind of control it with your thing. And so now we can see, okay, now I can see what's happening. I can see my Y intercept for my population, my X intercept. I can see where they intersect. Those are all important numbers. I can see the Y intercept of my zombie. Okay, the red is my zombie growth. The the blue is the population. If I hit that little wheel, I can then change colors if I wanted to. I can also change from the discrete to continuous if I want to. Okay, 
I can mess with all of that. I can even erase it if I want to, okay? So, uh, you know, I can deal with all of that stuff as needed here. I can make that disappear so I can see it bigger. I can hit that those double arrows and pull it back out, okay? Um, so that's kind of, hopefully that helps you as you're um, trying to manipulate your graph. Again, it's where that little uh, wrench is. I put it in projector mode. This is what it looks like outside of projector mode. Okay, both of them are pretty good. Um, it's just adjusting these, okay, to work. So maybe here you'd want to put negative 10, you know, negative whatever, okay. So, um, yeah, those are the things you want to play around with um, as you're taking a look at things, okay. So, um, again, looking at this so I can write on it. Okay, that's going to affect your x-axis. That's going to affect your y-axis. That's how far left it goes. That's how far right it goes. How far down it goes. How far up it goes. That's, we'll just show you these tick marks as we're doing it. Okay. And again, get rid of the minor grid lines. Um, projector mode can be very helpful. So that's what we did to do that. And this is how I uh, got rid of those. And that's how I changed things. Okay. So I think that should be pretty good for you guys. Um, that should help you... Uh, as you're doing this and then you can manipulate that around take a screenshot print it off anything like that or just screenshot it and put it into your electronic thing so anyway back to the rest of the video now. if you decide to go discrete it would look something like this okay if you decide to go continuous it look like this I'll probably just keep mine as continuous um, but we'll, we'll treat them basically the same way now from this graph and notice I changed mine to green so green is our evacuation formula and purple is our zombie formula okay so looking back here we need to figure out our domain and our range now remember domain is all the x values that make sense in our story problem and range is all the y values okay so looking at our evacuation can we go back to negative days no so we'd start here at zero the x value of zero would be where we start okay and we go to here to our x intercept which by the way is another 29.87 okay okay and what does that x intercept mean well the x value remember stands for days so it would take us 29.878 days to have 0y, and y is our population. So what's our contextual meaning? You know, 29.878, basically 30 days to empty the city. Okay, that's what that contextual meaning is. Now going back here. Okay, so beyond that, we have nobody in there. So this would be our domain for our problem. We can actually go into um, Desmos, and you can use brackets right after your equation, and you could go 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 30, basically. And you could type that in right there, and then it would cut it off just at those pieces. Honestly, you probably should do that. But there's our domain. So domain is just x value, so we'd go 0 to 29.878. So you write that in like this, 0 to 29.878. And what does that represent? Okay, here it represents um, days from start to finish of, exact, of evacuation. Now the range, range are the y values. So we start here, down here at zero, right? And we go clear up till our population of 35,854. So our range would be from zero to 35,854. What does that mean? That's just our population. Okay, how many people are in the city? All right. Now, um, that rate of change. So, um, we'll get to that one in a second. Let's look now. We need to do the same stuff for our zombie. 
So what's our domain? What's our range? Okay, well, our domain here would be from, okay, where we start, which was right here. So once again, that really shouldn't be part of our graph. Okay, our domain till when? Okay, well, maybe it helps to talk about what's going on right here. Okay, what does this mean, where they intersect? Okay, x, remember, was days. Y was um, either population of people or zombies. Okay, so let's actually go back here. So I made just a little bit nicer graph right here. So where do these functions meet, intersect? Well, they intersect right here at 6.235. Twenty-eight three seventy-one point eight five three. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, like we said, if x is days in six point two three five days, the number of zombies and the number of people in the city will be the same, which would mean that all the people in the city have been turned into zombies. Okay, so the x is day when all the people are zombies. Okay, that's what you're kind of looking at there. Okay, so for our domain here, that's where our domain would end because if there's no more people, you can't make any more zombies. Okay, so from 0 to 6.235. Okay, and then our range would be from 5, right? Because we start at 5 up to 28,371. Point whatever that was. What was that? 0.853. Okay, and what's the meaning? You know, that's the population of zombies. The number. This is days, right? Until everybody's turned into zombies. All right, now, x-intercept for exponential. Remember with exponentials, you have that asymptote. So our asymptote is going to be here at the x-axis. So it's actually never going to have an x-intercept, okay? Because there's no point where there's no zombies. All right. So we've got that information for you guys there from my example. That's how I would do it, okay? Yours is obviously going to be different. I would suggest using Desmos to help you out with that stuff. Now, oh, rate of change. So rate of change, if we're thinking about this, okay, for the linear, we'd go down here and here. So this y value minus this y value would give us a difference of 7482.147. Then this x value to this x value would give us a difference here, so it would be 6.235. So the rate of change, if we're doing it based off this information, would be 7482.147 over 6.235, which if we type that into a calculator, we get 1200.023577. So basically, what we said, okay, because we're dealing with a situation where it's not exact, um, that's why we get that little bit of a decimal. But that's our rate of change. So per day, once again, that's how many we're losing. Now, if we do it for our exponential, Okay, the difference here is we're going up from 5 to this number. So I'd go 28,371.853 minus 5 to find that difference, that y value of 28,366.853. And then once again, 6.25. So I'd go 28,366.853 divided by 6.235 to get the that one, which would be 
about 4549.6155. So basically about 4549.50 zombies per day. We're quadrupling them, them, remember, so when we're down here, there's less and less, but they move so quickly. But if we were to graph that linearly, that's how many zombies essentially per day we'd be having, okay? So that one would kind of go here with this, the 4549.62, okay? Meaning the same thing. All right, so there we go, guys. There's some basics there for that. Now, one other thing I would want to add, um, make sure you're using your numbers. If you have questions, let me know. If you need your data, let me know. Pick a good city. Fill this out, and then give me a good presentation, okay? Use Desmos for your graph. You can graph by hand, but Desmos is so much easier. Now, for your artistic part, you need to blend that math in, okay, to the story using the information you found out based off where they intersect, okay? So um, be creative with this. You will need to, if you're doing something other than a story, you need to make sure you approve it through me first. But, you know, use that city. So like Beja, if I'm looking at Beja here, so I'm going to use stuff like this map. I'll look it up. Use these roads, okay? There's, in the center of town, there's this big tower surrounded by walls. You know, that would figure into my story or my picture or my comic. Okay, here's a view from up here looking down and seeing the city. Okay, I would use this information to help color my story. I would also use this information I got from my graph. The contextual meaning, all this information I would incorporate, synthesize into here so that at the end you come up with a really great story that fits in mathematically, fits in with um, the city I'm at um, to make it really have some fun with it. So there we go, guys. There's kind of a, an example, an outline, a basic idea um, on the presentation. Make sure you have a good way to do it. You spend some time on this and uh, make things look really great. So other than that, make sure you let me know if you have any questions um, or if you need any help or anything like that. And good luck with it. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with.